Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be a video that I will tell about Home Assistant but I will not show any installation. Basically, I will answer some questions that a lot of people start to ask. Since that I started to show some videos about Home Assistant and some video about Oracle Cloud, the question that a lot of people ask me is, Alan, could you please install Home Assistant in the Oracle Cloud? Then this way I don't need to have any computer in, or in Raspberry Pi or anything in my home, only everything will be processed in the Oracle Cloud. Now I decide, okay, we'll do a video and explain why it's not good and why you should not do it. This video will be really fast, but at least I will clarify a lot of questions that the people maybe misunderstand or misinterpret it. If you like this idea, please don't forget to leave your like and let's do it. So first thing, let's explain what it's Home Assistant and what you can do with the Home Assistant. This Home Assistant that I have, it's located in my house in Raspberry Pi, so it's everything local in my network. If I come here in configuration, then I come here in my uh, device and service, I have some device that I already located. It's not all configured, I just start to configure again because I was trying to do some tests and mess up and now I can reconfigure it again. So I have some applications. Some of the applications locate local. Look like this, this, this local. Some of those is cloud. So the metrology, the temperature, the weather will locate in the cloud. Some uh, repository, it's located in the cloud. But most of those it's locate local. And that's in this way I have my printer. I can locate my printer. I have my C waves. I can have my Synology NAS. I have my home kit, my TAD. Okay, this one they say that is kind of a cloud, but not all the dispositive, it's the cloud. My camera as well, it's uh, it's local. So now imagine I will do, I will come here, my instance of Oracle. I have my computer here and I will create a, a and that I will add my home assistant in the dock. It's not difficult to do it, definitely it's not difficult. You can come here in the home assistant, you can install your portainer, you come here, copy this information, locate what path that you're gonna do. Copy here, come here, stock, sorry, stock, add a new stock, add here, and that I do a home assistant. This is the easy step, but then what's the problem for it? If I come here in my home assistant, uh, then I will try to configure my, I don't know, my Synology. So in order to configure my Synology, I need to open the port for the Synology to have external access for the network. And that this way I needed to get my home assistant and try to connect for my Synology in the same way. It's work well. No, I don't think that it will work well. Why? Because first of all, you open that door for Synology or you open that door for the printer, you open the door for the smart light or that uh, home kit will be the um, smart uh, sockets. You open that port. So everyone can have access to that port and then you open a chance for someone to try to have access for it. Let's get a little bit more clear what this chance for access and what try dev invasion that can happen in your network. Let's open my holder to explain it. In my case, I use Unify Dream Machine and I have a invasion protection activate. So they will block all the tentative of invasion that they don't identify. Sometimes it's quite annoying because I'm traveling, I try to access it and they block it and say, no, you're not from this network. We don't recognize you. So I need to go into my network and to enable it. But uh, okay, I have a third invasion the last uh, seven days. I think that's normally they keep it. If I come here in my track, I have a lot of uh, different IP address try to access my network. I have only few ports open in my network. This one is located for port 90, the true it's to port 80. As well, I have the port 450, that is for, for free. Basically, this one's it's for my HTTP and HTTPS protocol. And that's uh, check how much they try to invade. The same thing for my FTP, they try quite a lot with port 21. And uh, all this application, all the ports that open my system, they try to access it. It's good? No, definitely it's not good. Why it's not good? Because they try to access it. But my system is already protected against of it. Now imagine that I come here and I have my printer. Some time ago, yeah, I don't know if you remember, Windows need to do a Windows update because the printers was allowed the hackers to enter in the printer and that's look at entering the network and do everything that they want. So in this way, 
you make uh, unsecurity. Once that you open this port and try to connect it externally, you make your system more unsecure and not only for the latency, you basically put uh, your lighting exposed for the network. So everyone that uh, could try to access your IP and be able to access it and know a little bit of programming can get your light and turn on and off the way that they want. They can have your cameras and turn on and off the way that they want or check what is going on, can vigate you in your own house. Imagine that you have internal camera that record your kid and that someone is looking your kid doing it. It's not safe. This reason that you need to have a block, you need to have a point. Either that you have a password, but once that you open the port, you allow that some people start to try, try, erro, erro, and some point in time, if they try a lot and think that's interesting, maybe they can find the password or can find some equipment that's not update in the last model and that they have some information and access it. So I suggest you to don't do it. Then the people start to confuse. I'll have a home assistant cloud. Yes, have, definitely has. If I come here, configuration, home assistant cloud, yes, they existed, but it's totally different for what you're thinking. This Home Assistant Cloud, it's basically a system that Home Assistant create to have all the process or some application that's working in the cloud working there. Anyway, if I come here, they say you need to still have a Home Assistant in your house. You need to have a system in your house and that this system will connect to the cloud for processing or to have some cloud system work with them. But remember, you need to have a home assistant. Anyway, this one, they ov don't overwrite your system in your house because you need to have a system secure, stable. Either the latency between your house and uh, Oracle Cloud will be really low, you expose the ports to be able to access it. Remember, all the time that you use this home assistant cloud, you have your system with a home assistant running and this system with home assistant will send information for the cloud encrypted and that they will process in there and come back it. So don't try to use the Oracle Cloud to do it. Either that you can do it, basically once that you do this configuration, the only way that you can do home assistant in Oracle Cloud, it's home assistant supervised or home assistant Docker. The problem for it is that they simulate that you have a hardware in your house, outside your house. So will not work, you have a problem for make integration, you have a problem for open ports for be able to do integrations, and you expose a lot of things that you should not do it. This home assistant, it's better for you have a small Raspberry Pi. If you don't have money to buy a Raspberry Pi 4, buy a 3 and try to do it local, don't do external. This reason that I try to do this video, and I hope that you guys like, and I think that, and I hope that now it's more clear why I will not show how you can install Home Assistant in the Oracle Cloud. Not because it's not possible. Yes, it's possible. It's easy, but it's not secure. It's not good for you. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like. Consider to subscribe for the channel. And see you next time. Bye.